Okay, Insights Channel, Steve here. Today I'm going to talk about world events and what's going on because some very serious stuff going on right as we speak. I'm sure quite a few of you heard about a massive attack on Israel by Hamas. Uh, from all areas, including from the air and by ship, and about a thousand people have been killed in Israel. And as um, and they came down in hang gliders as well, or uh, parachutes with machine guns, and killed lots of innocent people, shooting people in their houses, killing men, women, and children. Done by Hamas. But what I want to bring to your attention is, please go on my website so you can get the real picture of why and why it's happened or allowed to happen, inverted commas. Go on my site, www.outofthebottomlesspit.co.uk. You'll find about 10 very, very interesting articles on there that I put there today. Very interesting background information, and I especially like to suggest if you have to make a choice of which articles to listen to or read, please listen to the one by Mike Adams, because I'm convinced he's giving a thorough rundown on the background as to why such a thing can happen. How could Israeli Mossad intelligence be com compromised? To such a degree that this could even happen. I have heard since that happened yesterday. I have heard today that they retaliated on the Gaza Strip and uh, the media, the main media are blaming uh, Iran as being behind it all. So it's a very dangerous situation and that's what we've all been concerned about for a long time. That it doesn't escalate into some sort of missile war in the Middle East, escalating and escalating until it becomes massive or even international. But of course, there's a lot of factors involved. But I think you'll find plenty of information there on my website today about this particular topic of the Middle East and what's going on in Israel and where is it leading to? What are the reasons for it? Who's behind? Who's really behind it? I think you'll find a lot of the answers there if you go on my website. Again, that's www.outofthebottomlesspit.co.uk for up-to-date information on what's going on over there in Israel. Another very interesting topic is that there's been a big media blackout concerning some very important things that Putin said just in the last couple of days. Putin has gone on air to warn Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, which represents the New World Order, basically. He's put them on notice that their days are numbered. Now that's a big statement for some political leader or leader of a country to not be afraid of the world powers. Well, there's some interesting information there also on my website about that. And again, you'll find that on www.outthebottomlesspit.co.uk. But he doesn't just give a warning to Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. Putin also mentions the true situation in Ukraine. So I think you might want to see how devastating the situation really is in Ukraine, what's really behind it, etc. So you'll also find that on my website. You'll also find a very interesting article there. All these articles I'm telling you about, I've taken the time to listen to, read, or listen to the videos. That's why they're on my website, because I can vouch for them. They, you might not agree with everything on them, but there's enough on them to make them worth listening to. Uh, they sound pretty sound to me. Another very interesting one is done by Tom Horn and team, talking about what is the connection between UFOs and Israel. Very well done, very interesting. Um, 
very striking information actually. Uh, I think you'll find that also very, very interesting. I also, when somebody asked me today, well, what do you think about why would Putin say something that crazy to the world powers and those who control the planet, basically? Why is he putting them on warning? This is the answer I gave them. I said, it's my own personal opinion that, according to the Bible, the Antichrist is going to come out of Russia. And you can see that in Ezekiel 38, 39. You can see the armies of Russia coming to invade Israel, along with Iran and many other nations. And the way the world is lining up now, I wouldn't be surprised at all, that's how it is. But what I said today was the following. If you look at history, how did a new power arise and under what circumstances? You'll be shocked to know that if you study ancient Egypt and then you study Assyria and how they came to power, how Babylon came to power, how the Medio Persians came to power, and how the Greeks came to power, and then the Romans. It's the same every single time. Right before the demise of a nation, what is their attitude of their rulers and leaders? They are arrogant, very arrogant, very confident, and have the attitude of, oh, we always win. We've got all the money, we've got all the power, who could fight against us? And and if people don't agree with us, we'll just do something underhanded and uh, we'll take them from under their bags. So we have ways because we've got all the power and money. And that is the arrogant attitude of people like Klaus Schwab and all the bankers he represents. So for Putin to turn around and say, Klaus Schwab, your days are numbered. He's not just talking to Klaus Schwab, who's just a puppet, really. Although he did train a lot of the globalists. He did, as a fact, he did train a lot of them, and he himself was trained by Henry Kissinger in the 70s. But the fact that one of the top people is telling them off and telling them their days are over, to me that sounds like you've got an emerging new power. And I'm not talking about the official New World Order. I'm talking about a brand new world power is emerging. Because if you read in the Bible about the Antichrist, you'll find out that he's, he, he doesn't behave at all like Klaus Schwab or all the globalists and always lifting themselves up and putting the people down and making people feel like they're just cockroaches and the elite just walk all over everybody, just be whatever they say according to their big media that they control because of all the money they have. No. If you read in your Bible, you'll find out it talks about the Antichrist with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. This is Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they might believe a lie. Well, that's where this world is at at the moment. Most people don't listen when you try to tell them the truth. Most people keep on going, doing whatever they're doing. And I say, ah, it's not my problem. I'll just get on with what I'm doing, mate. And I don't need to know about COVID and I don't need to know about politics. I don't need to know about any of this stuff. Nah, nah, nah. Most people are like that. Because it's like putting up, it's inconvenient. It uh, makes them feel uncomfortable knowing what's going on. Don't want to know, mate. It's not my problem, mate. That's how most of them are. There's only a handful that want to know. And in turn, they themselves stand up and tell others. Just a handful, relatively speaking. At least I'm taught by the West. I can't talk about anyone else. But this is a very serious situation. And I think as deceptive as things have been the last five years on this planet, and all you've seen the last five years, I think it's nothing compared to what's coming. Because so far... The enemy is obvious. 
the enemy is a liar, undermining, satanic, boasting, arrogant, rich, think he can never lose, and, and, and it comes across like that all the time. But people are getting used to that. But you see, the weakness to that is, it's like if you study about psychops, you look that up, well, that is psychops, some of the CIA is involved with. Basic psychology of CIA is you torture somebody and then you be nice to him. Do you know when they do things like that, the person who's tortured then, after they're nice to them, ends up doing anything they say, like a ro robot or machine. That's pretty much what they do to people. Right, that's what's been said. Now, what if in the grander scheme of things, and I have said this many times before, that I called an article several years ago, I called it The Antichrist or Mr. Nice Guy. You see, the powers that be, their only hope right now is that an alternative to themselves shows up. They need it to happen. They need a Mr. Nice Guy to come on the scenes. But when you know they're all both on the same side in the sense that they're all satanic, they're all following Satan. Just seven, Satan has different levels of commands. And the next one to come on the scene is on a higher level. The Antichrist is a higher level. And, and don't think because the elite are all Satanists that they don't conflict with each other. They do. I think Putin was trained by them. He used to be the head of the KGB in Russia under the Soviet Union. He's had that training. I mean, if you're the head of the KGB, that's a pretty rough job, you know, the things you must have seen and been involved in, you know. Um, so I'm not saying he's a nice guy. I'm just saying that I think Putin, he's been... Of all the politicians I've seen in the world, he's been the most pragmatic. Very careful what he does. Very, very careful, slow with things. And I think that somebody's been trying to provoke him for a lot of trouble to try and bring Russia down and divide it up so that the, the rich elite could divide and conquer Russia and take all the spoils, as they've done all over the world, you know. We know these things. But it seems to me that this guy, Putin, is a lot smarter than they are. And I'm just wondering if it's because he's on a higher level than they are. And, and it, like I said, the downfall of the rich and the elite when they get in so much power for so long, that is their downfall. They don't see that they themselves can be totally undermined. Just because they've got lots of money and power, they don't see that they're a sitting target. I was saying today, you know, Somebody like Putin, all he has to do is to take out a few dozen people on this planet, specific people, and everything they stand for, take them down, and the whole West would collapse. That's how fragile it is. Really fragile. Now, I'm not saying that's what he's going to do, but why is he saying to the powers that be, your days are numbered? when they're the ones who trained him in the first place. And some say to me, oh, he's just part of the game, don't you see it, Steve? He's, um, he's, he's announcing some new, I don't know, new COVID plan or something, so he said, that must be part of it. I don't know, I just find him an enigma. I find Putin, if he's not the Antichrist, he's certainly a forerunner of the Antichrist. But I just know that when the Antichrist comes on the scene, he'll be a very different kettle of fish than anything you've seen so far, because he's supposed to be charismatic. He wins all the people of the world. He takes away the riches from the rich and gives it to the poor. Now, of course, the rich might be in on this plan as well, willing to back off so he takes over. It's very possible. I've even heard uh, King Charles mention there's somebody in the background there. And King Charles said in, um, when he did this ceremony recently, I think I've mentioned this to you before, that seven-year ceremony leading up to 2030, he said a few months ago, he, he talks about this he person in the background, and he says, 
we need to make sure that he has enough billions and trillions of dollars at his disposal then at some time in the future there's no place on earth where we don't have an army powerful enough to do our bidding uh, that he will take care of now that's what they think but if I know Satan and I know the people who work for him well God forbid I know Satan or I don't know him personally but I know how he works um, I think that he doesn't Satan does not like competition and when some of his own people get too haughty and too too um, high up and and if get who it was who put them in power and forget who helped them to be in power and if you lose track of things then Satan brings them down and you see it through history the Egyptians were so cocky they got totally destroyed the time Moses then you had the Assyrian Empire, horrible way they treated people, such cruelty, totally destroyed by the Babylonians. And now the Babylonians thought they were hot stuff. Somebody dug under their their uh, their castle or their fortified city in Babylon by just diverting the water of the rivers and got in. Thing they didn't think of. And then they were taken over by the Medio Persians, who were in power for a few hundred years, and then they were defeated by Alexander the Great with one tenth army of what they had. And they had this guy Xerxes, the most powerful king, was like a giant, at least 12, 15 feet high, thought he was invincible. But did the Medio Persian Empire continue in its arrogance? No, it was brought down in a moment by Alexander the Great. And of course the Greeks were then taken over by the Romans. And now there's a power that everybody seems to think the New World Order is going to take over and that's it. I'm not so sure about that. I think there's an emerging new power. According to the Bible, it has to do with Russia. Gog, Magog, Russia. And I think that we might have already seen the face of the Antichrist. Let's see, although I would say Putin's a bit old, he's the same age as me, he's 71. It's a bit old to be the Antichrist, I'd imagine you get somebody a lot younger. But I'm saying, he's, he's certainly got amazing pragmatic abilities, he's certainly done a fantastic job in Russia in the last 20 years, and there, there is no politician in the world as popular as Putin, when you've got 80% of your own people are totally for you. He's changed Russia. He changed Russia from being poor and corrupt and run by uh, oligarchies and uh, and companies and companies of the West trying to get in and sabotage everything. He's got rid of all that. That's why the powers of be hate Putin so much. Because he got rid of a lot of their power. But he's been in power, I think, almost 20 years now. Or I think he's celebrating 20 years now. Is he the Antichrist? I don't know. But I haven't seen any politician act the way Putin does. And one who tells the powers of be off like he just did. So who is this guy? Now how come that the West hasn't been able to take him out, take him down or compromise him? How, how come that hasn't happened? Anyway, keep an eye on that guy. Keep an eye on Putin as much as you can where you can get some information because I know main media will avoid reporting on things he says uh, they only report what they want people to hear anyway that's some of the news things just that's all just today and yesterday actually just just amazing amount of things are happening but especially us all keep our eyes on israel and our prayers for the people there in israel i think it's terrible when innocent people have to die whether israelis or palestinians it's a terrible thing it should not happen the way it is for the convenience of politicians and for power and money. It is sick. A human person, human life is worth more than all the money of the world put together. No human being should ever be harmed for any reason. So I know that's how God sees it. But anyway, thanks for listening. If you want to hear more about what's going on, keep looking at my website 
www.outthebombspit.co.uk and I'll try and keep up to date with what's going on in Israel and what's going on around the world. So thanks for listening. Bye for now.